Hello, welcome to my podcast. Thank you for having me, Dom. This is a fantastic space. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you being here. I, I've just been out on a on a run and I was listening to some other podcasts that you've been on and I was um, thinking about our relationship because I I suppose I'd call you a friend. Absolutely. But we're not friend friends. Like, you know what no, I mean? No, I mean, we don't like hang out every Friday night. But I absolutely, I've always held you in, in really high esteem and, and had a great affection for you and JJ. Um, and, and would absolutely consider you both friends. Yeah, or likewise. Yeah. You're one of these people, like if I walk into a room and it's some function and I'm, I don't want to be there and I've got anxiety and I see you there, immediately I feel a little bit more comfortable. It's like likewise. there's someone here that I can gravitate towards and have a gr- I know I'm going to have a great conversation with. Totally, totally. Yeah. I remember when I first met you and Jay, do you remember the first time we met? What was that? It was... Um, Wasn't it that boardroom meeting in Shortland Street? Oh, God, we- no, we were good friends by then. That's why he did the whole thing. And actually, i got to tell you, I mean, I wasn't actually as upset as what I think... Oh, my God. I mean, I can say this now. Yeah. As what I think the company got. Like, I, I felt like the company got really upset. And I was like, oh, no, I thought it was a bit of a dick move. But, but at the same time, at the same time, I was like, oh, I live... Yeah, but then it got real serious, and I was like, okay, well, if everyone's taking it seriously, and we're going to go to the boardroom while, you know, I'll sit there. But I never wanted you guys to feel like, yeah, that that was a really bad thing to have done. Oh, no, it was a, it was a major dick move. And I, jeez, we should elaborate, should we elaborate on what it is, or should I just chop this bit out? I mean, let's talk about it, then we can always fix it in post. Okay, so it was like the Shortland Street 20th, 20th. or 20, 20th... Uh, <laughs> birthday party yeah and uh jj and i were there and uh, um we were, we were chatting to you and the alcohol was flowing and i i, fl- I had my phone in record mode yeah <laughs> and and it was like you i think you were talking to jj you were like you you need to find you do do a dating segment and find me a date totally yeah it's... basically we recorded you guys without your consent and then the next the, the next mm. morning on the and when i said when i say it now like I, my toes are curling like i'm embarrassed about about what we did but at the time to be honest I probably didn't see anything wrong with it, and that's that's a me problem. Oh no, absolutely. Well, I I, I remember when I heard the segment, um, you did do a really nice lead in. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll give you that. Like you were like, hey, we were at the Shortland Street twentieth, and you know I love these two. You know they're great friends. Um, but yeah, <laughs> and I was like, oh, well, I guess you preempted it. Because <laughs> it wasn't like when you hear secretly recorded audio you think it's something um salacious or malicious which it definitely wasn't no um no. so it's just kind of like a way of like ticking off that we're at the party last night but i do see now all sorts of problems with it and i'd never do something like that again yeah no and it's these so are invasive always, and it was wrong well it's you know these are learning moments hey yeah. and i think also at the time you know, let's be honest like the nature of the edge you know you kind of guys were on that sort of shock jock kind of level which is what the show was about and so I mean I can see it from your point of view as well and it was a kind of a bit of a fun bit of a dick but, but 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 I never I never had any personal animosity towards you for it um either of you and that day in the boardroom and then Jay cried and and so yeah but I I love that we've remained friends but yes I remember when I first met you and Jay I we were doing C4 and the edge was just about to start i think we'd been on air for a little while and the edge was starting the segment where they were bringing the edge hosts on so it was like you jj tash Thompson. Oh, Tosh, Tosh. Yeah, it was the yeah. edge chart show like a saturday night one hour right right and you guys were sitting in the green room and you were really really nervous and that's the very very first time we met and i remember thinking at that time because had you guys come up from down the line yeah, we'd, The Edge was originally based in Hamilton and we'd only yes. been in Auckland a couple of years. And it was so obvious. <laughs> you know, like, I was like, oh, because I'm from the provinces, provinces yeah, too. From I'm from Tauranga. you know, and so I was like, oh, I feel you guys, you know. <laughs> These lovely provincial kids coming yeah. up. Yeah, so long journey, long journey, darling. Yeah, lo- long journey. You know, Sean and Street incident could have been the, the, the breaking of our relationship, but it's just not even a thing. No, totally. And that's cool, and I think that says a lot about you. Um, oh, I, one thing, um, yeah, listening to a lot of um, previous podcasts you've been on, and to be fair, there haven't been as many as what I thought, but there's a few. Uh, in particular, one that you did with um, the Girls Uninterrupted. Oh, you listened and, to that one? Yeah, Ooh, and another one um, with Simon Bridges, and it feels like you were manifesting 
some sort of interaction with Jason Momoa. Um, this is before yes. he came to New Zealand for Minecraft or whatever he was doing. Did you yes. meet Jason Momoa? No, I did not. I did not. And then <laughs> now he's not even available anymore. So I was like, ah, oh. I was so disappointed. There was a, there were a few moments where I actually could have, but like it just didn't work out. So I thought, okay, for whatever reason, I wasn't meant. Well, Jason wasn't meant to meet me, me right now. I don't know. I reckon if, if, if these podcasts got, got um, on his radar, he was probably hiding from you. He was, <laughs> he was terrified. Well, we do have like mutual friends. So. <laughs> um, we'll get into all that. Yes. You yes. know everybody. It's crazy oh, who you know. Um, oh. First of all, let's go all the, all the way back. Um, so you're from Tauranga? Yes. Samoan mom and a palangi dad? Yeah. And um, a takeaway shop kid. Two yeah. takeaway shops. Yeah. So when I see shop kids, you know, because that's a real experience, you know, the kids who grow up in their parents' shops, you know, often you'll see it in like dairies, you know, but uh, yeah, my version was the takeaway. Um, that was my playground. And you were allergic to fish. Yeah. <laughs> Insane, like especially for a Samoan, being allergic to fish and seafood, but crazily, I've actually grown out of my allergy, which was... That's bizarre too. Mm. Yeah. So what, what did that look like? Uh, to me, it seems like a kid's fantasy having your parents own a dairy. Mm. Um, but a takeaway shop would be like the next the next best thing. Yeah, except uh, I think because it was so commonplace for us, like we didn't actually eat a lot of takeaways because that was what, you know, mum and dad made all the time. So I, yeah, I used to like hang out in the shop, especially, you know, playing spaces and that. And like my dad would let me ring up all these credits. And then, of course, I was a little kid and I couldn't play the games properly. So all the boys, when they'd see me at the game, would come to the game because they would know that at some point I'll just walk away and go, oh, does anyone want my credits? And they'd be like, yeah. And they'd take my credits. <laughs> it was a big thing back then. And what sort of age? Like five? Uh, yeah, six. yeah, four, five. Oh, uh, well, I started going to the shop. My parents started taking me to the shop when I was 11 months old and then till, till I started school, yeah. I went to kindy a little bit, but not really until, yeah, school. Hmm. Yeah. When, when you reflect on that time, um, like, is there anything there that helped you as an actor, like in terms of like um, yes. human interactions 100%. and human behaviour? 100%. I think my whole entire childhood, well, life experience um, helps me with my acting um, because I think growing up in a shop environment – um, there's nothing childlike there. So all I did all day long was observe adults. Just obs And I didn't really have many playmates, although there was a health shop next to our shop in Greton, and there was a little boy, um, his mum owned the health shop, and so when he was there, we'd play together, and that was my only little mate. And so we did a bit of time at kindy together, and he actually, after I did um, Duncan Garner's podcast, he actually messaged me. This kid that I used to play with <laughs> at our parent shops. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And said what? Cool. And just said, oh, I don't know if you remember me, but we used to play together. And I was like this, yes, you were the only kid I used to play with. His name is Patrick. And um, I, I used to remember that his mum and my mum would always say, oh, your boyfriend. And it used to really upset me at the time. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how old is he? Like the same age as you? Yeah, we're exactly the same age. Fuck, we're old as fuck now. Eh? I'm, no. 50, I'm 51. You're, 40, you're 50 I'm next not, January. Yeah, I'm, I'm turning 50 next January. But we're not old. We're older. <laughs> I keep telling everyone this. I go, we're not old yet. We will know when we are old. I mean, yes, we're getting to that. We're middle age. We're middle age. We're, we're, things are starting to fall apart. You know, and going down south and, you know, all the things. But but we're not old yet, Don. We're not. We're far, far from it. No, but it, I don't say it like a, bit, like a bad thing. I, okay. feel, I, feel, I feel good about it. But I think back to, say, when I was 30 or 25, and oh, yeah. I thought 50, you may as well have been dead. Oh, you freaking know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do feel bad now of looking at 40 and 50 as being old because now I'm like, oh, well, okay, I get it. Yeah. And, and, and like yourself, like I love the age that I'm at. Like I, I've got no qualms about being a woman and getting older and you know i've done the menopause i've done all the things you know it's 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 just life have you how was how was menopause what did that mean to you yeah well you know it was hilarious for me because i didn't realize i was going through menopause um and until my i don't know how candid we can get uh, until my periods stopped mm -hmm. for a year and then i was like mm, wow i haven't had a period for a year I, I should really go get that checked out is that menopause or is it something you know else it could be something else and then I did the test and my doctor rang me and he said oh yeah no it's the menopause and, and that I was done that I was through it 
So you didn't have like hot flashes or the only the only symptom that I was aware of was um, some night sweats. But I was really lucky. I didn't get any like hot flashes and stuff. Like I mean, but menopause is this whole thing. Like some women just have the worst time on earth, and some women like me kind of barely noticed it. Breeze, <laughs> yeah. you're not even like, aware. <laughs> yeah, and then and I'm like, I was done, done because they can tell by some level they check. And he was like, No, you are like literally post menopausal. <laughs> how, how good does it? Do- when um like coming from like a just a, a man here like when you when you lose your period does it feel like is it a good thing to get rid of it or does it feel like you're losing a part of you? Hundred percent. So what I loved Dom is that I've got a lot of older girlfriends who walked me through some of the the feelings that um I would go through and I was so so grateful because one of my girlfriends said to me she goes you know it's really funny you'll miss your period when it's gone because it signifies the end of an era. And she was 100% right, you know? I mean, I love the practicality of it because, you know, <laughs> that's not a good time. Um, but, but it is, but it does. But you do, when you're at this stage of life, you do know, oh, yeah, that has that has ended, that, that part has ended. And you do, you mourn it a bit, you mm. mourn it a bit. And, yeah, you are in a different phase. So can you remember when you got it? Was that a traumatic time? Yes, I totally remember when I got it. Um, Are you a young developer or standard? No, I was pretty or? standard, pretty standard. And I was so lucky, again, that I had some female cousins and friends that talked to me about my period because, of course, my mum never discussed anything like this. And I'm like, you know, now it got rest her soul. I, I wonder, I don't know what my mum thought I would think. It would happen <laughs> because because she, we honestly we never even had we had no conversation of the sort and if it wasn't for my cousins if it wasn't for girls friends I went to school with and I even questioned it I was going are you sure are you and they were like yes and I was like every woman every girl and they were like yes it's going to happen it's going to happen it's going to happen and this is what you have to do and thankfully I got it when I was at school so that I could like go to my friends and then I went home and told my mum and then she just went, you must never, ever speak of this again. And then she just bought me the supplies every month and that was all we ever discussed, ever. Wow, is that just like a Samoan thing or? Yeah. I, like well, an, uh, an across the board Samoan thing or is it just a I your mum it, thing? Yeah, I used to think it was, that's how all Samoan women were, but then I had all these other Samoan friends that were like, no, my mum was really open, but... I, I did put that down to my mum, her own upbringing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 Because in, in these um, podcasts that I listen to that you've been on, um, mm. yeah, you, your mum, she passed away a couple of years ago. Yeah. And it seems like you had a good relationship by the end, but it mm. seems like it was a, a tricky one. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and I tell you what, Dom, I'm, I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that my mum and I had the relationship and the journey, the whole journey that we had. Um, because the whole journey that my mother and I had made me the, makes me who I am today. And, and I'm so grateful for her, you know. Um, I get emotional talking about my mum still. Mm. Um, because have you, your mum's still here? Oh, yeah, she's, still, she's 17. She's still really well. But Amazing. I, I could, oh, yes, you guys just did Paris. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's great. But there's definitely parallels between... Between your relationship with your mum and mine, like our household was very strict as well. Mm. In terms mm. of beatings, I don't know. Maybe I, I haven't Ooh. heard you elaborate about this, but um, mm. ours were always da- beatings under, under a controlled environment. But yeah. it was always about sometimes you do something wrong, and then it's wait until your father gets home. Then four hours later, you're getting you, you know your ass is burning for something that you can't even remember what you did. Totally, <laughs> totally. I mean, I think you know also that generation. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah, we yeah. were we were the generation of physical discipline. I mean, hello, we went to school. They could physically <laughs> discipline you at school. What I mean, what parents would like go? Oh, that's okay today. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember like getting um getting either the strat or the cane at school, and I'd go home and tell 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 mum like uh, or, or dad hoping for some sympathy, and they'd always be like, no 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 no, you must have fucked up. Hundred <laughs> percent. It was always it, it was there was never any question of the doubt that you were in the wrong. Totally, totally. I mean, we, we me and my friends from the same generation talk about you know we we used to witness like even teachers were just like literally like boot kids like guys <laughs> like just in the butt like like totally just like boot and you just go we just sat there going oh well poor Billy you know it was like but no I mean I I physical discipline of my generation being someone um it, it absolutely would would 
would be termed as abuse today. 100%, 100%. And then you have to remember, and, and this is what I try to apply to also, you know, understanding the generation that my mum came from. You know, they they came from brutal, brutal lives mm. in the islands. Like, And so, you know, I think to them, to their generation, they, they did believe we had it easier. Um, and I guess in some ways we did, but it was it was brutal. And and I don't elaborate out of out of respect for. It would be difficult for people to understand. Yeah. 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 How, like, how do you how do you get past that and have a relationship and mm. you know with the person mm. after that? Yes. You know. I don't know why, but I always knew that as a child, it's really important to understand and forgive your parents as people. Um, and I, I mean, I'm sure I got that from Oprah or something, who, where I got a, a great <laughs> lot of my life advice from <laughs> watching Oprah in the 90s. Um, and, and because I think underneath it all, with every child, no matter the relationship you've had with your parent, you know, we do love them. And, 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 and I, I always wanted to, to be able to truly love my mum and understand her and also forgive her for anything that, that I went through because, as, as we all know, and that saying goes, you know, our parents do do the best with what they know at the time, mm. you know, and, and we are only the parents that we are based on who we are as the person. You know, every parent is different. Even the parents that are great and and think they're the best and don't beat their children, I, I promise you, you will fuck your children up in some way. <laughs> yeah, in yeah, some way. In yeah, some way. yeah. They're going to end up with a chip on their shoulder yeah. about something <laughs> that you're doing now. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's just yeah. And you, you just hope you get like a, a a little bit better with every generation. Like it's incremental. Truly, truly, and yeah. that's all we can hope for. Yeah. yeah, and and your your dad. Um, it sounds like he was a really nice guy, like a real yeah. calm, real measured. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of my influence in life, well, actually equally, equally, because both my parents influenced me greatly, but, um, my dad is incredibly, incredibly kind, like beyond. Um, and I think growing up with him in the shop, uh, because we just spent so much time together and he just, we just talk and I, I just watch him as a person and he really, you know, that's what I believe though. You know, you, you, your greatest influence to your children is, uh, is who you are. That, that's mm. going to be the greatest influence. And my dad is truly, truly kind. And and he is truly non-judgmental. And anyone who knows my dad will tell you that. And I know that rubbed off on me. I know mm. that is deeply intrinsic of, of who I am as a person. Well, it's part of your DNA, right? Yeah. Both of them. But um, you, why didn't, why, have, have you questioned, like, why didn't, why he didn't do more to intervene? Oh, my like dad when the discipline could was... not, could not. <laughs> he couldn't. Mum was a force. Oh, she was the disciplinarian. Oh, she, yeah. she was the boss. She was the boss. She was the boss. Dad's a very strong man, a great provider. He's, a, you know, he's a southerner. You know, he's one of those fourth, fifth generation farming families. You know, they they are legit. They have had their, they they have had an experience too. Mm. Um, so Dad's endurance was incredible, and I guess the way Dad helped us was being the soft place to fall. Yeah. 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 Oh, that's so nice. Mm. When, you, when you get to, oh, like, I'm two years two years older than you, I guess. I'm 51. You're 49. Yeah. Um, and I, I've heard, I've heard you do interviews, and you talk about this, and you were you were so compassionate and so kind and so understanding and so forgiving of everyone. And I think I'm on the same path. And you get that way. And you, when you get older, you realise it's part of the human experience to fuck up. And um, there's the, seems to be this thing at the moment where people just love to there's a, like a, this pile on mentality. Yeah, and, uh, I hate it. people love to like tear someone down when they fuck up. But it's like you, it's the human experience. You're going to fuck up yourself sooner or later. 100%, so 100%. the best thing you can do is be a bit compassionate about totally. it. Totally. I mean, you know what it is, Dominic. It's actually the easiest thing on earth to understand people mm. if that's your intention. I mean, you know, all of that, all of that judgment just comes from people's um, choice to judge rather than understand. Mm. But, you know, the thing is that we are all imperfect humans and so therefore the easiest thing you can extend to another person is understanding that they are just a person just like you. We, It's it's just so easy. Mm. It's just so easy. We are all so similar. And I, I don't like that today 
it, it's exactly the same. Not only do people pile on when people in their view fuck up, but people pile on to people or create division simply for just not thinking the same way or liking the same people or voting for the same party. or And, and this division, just I, I just don't know where people imagine this leads to. Mm. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I like your viewpoint on that. Um yeah, let, okay, let's get back to some of your... So growing up in Tauranga as a, um, a Samoan kid in the 1970s... Well, Fucking traumatic as fuck. <laughs> yeah, so you, you had a lot to contend with. And, but I, I feel like this is um, an important part of build, building the Tawila story because what, like, what you've accomplished is, um, is amazing. Mm. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like uh, coming from such a, sm like a small minority to being um, a, you know, a successful Samoan woman on TV. It's fucking oh, cool. Thank you. Um, so I feel like this is a, an important part of building the Tawila story. Yeah, so, so a Samoan kid mm. in Tauranga in the 70s. Mm. The, the only Samoan in your school, in your class? Almost. Um, so I think there were like, from memory, there were three other Samoan women in Tauranga, all married to Pākehās, Pālangis, and... So there was one half caste girl in my year, and yeah, <laughs> that was <laughs> and, that's and, a... and yeah, me and Pio Lili. I remember her name was Pio Lili. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And when did you? When were you? When were you first aware of what racism was? Oh, early, 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 early on, because people were quite. Um, at best, they were indifferent to mum. Um, at their worst, they were just straight out racist, and we, I witnessed that, you know, as a child, and, and, you know, I've spoken about this before, you know, you don't sort of understand what that is, but you can just really feel it, you can really feel it, and then I started to notice that when we were with Dad, he was treated really differently, we were treated really differently when we were with Dad, as opposed to when we were with Mum, then I really began to understand that it was about the appearance of the colour and the culture and things like that. And I did ask my dad one day, I said, you know, dad, why do white people hate brown people? And he said, oh dear, you know, not all white people do. Um, he said, look at me, you know. Um, yeah, and then so I understood that, yes, um, not all white people are racist and some people were, and, and, and that still exists today. But that's again why I don't sort of, I don't like when we're trying to deal with racism today, where I believe it's never been better and it can continue to become mm. better. But I don't like the division when we say all white people are one way or all, one, all brown people are one way. And I feel like there's a little bit that ha of that happening, especially with the young brown people who are starting to sort of just see themselves as the opposite to white people and the colonizers and all these labels we want to give, mm. you know, each other. They're, they're all just bullshit. Mm. But did you did you think that um, white people hated brown people at that? Yeah, hundred percent. Did you? Hundred percent because they they demonstratively be be rude and and teachers teachers you know really made you aware that you were regarded differently. So you did feel you know when you're a kid you go oh they hate me you know mm, what I mean like that yeah, in your yeah. simplistic thinking. Um, you know, but that that wasn't isolated to Tauranga. And and actually again, there there were also non racist teachers in Tauranga. Not <laughs> not not everybody was. But but, but you certainly yeah, you yeah. certainly did feel it. I mean, even when we got to Auckland, you know, racism was still rife in the nineties as well, where people could just be openly racist and teachers could too. I mean, I remember the situation in, in when I went to Waitakere College in what was nineteen eighty eight by this stage. And these girls called me a black bitch. So I went to the principal because she was half Indian. And I thought to myself, because a lot of the time in those times, even authority didn't care. You know, other teachers didn't care that mm. that's what was happening. And so I thought, well, you know, the principal was half Indian. She will understand where I'm coming from. And she um, said, oh, yes, no, we'll, we'll, we'll take this very seriously and go see your dean about it. And then my dean was like this, oh, well, I mean, I don't think that was racist. Because, <laughs> and she said, and she straight up says to me, because they shouldn't have called you a bitch, but you are black. <laughs> oh, my fucking God. Word. So then my mum, who is just like, she was so anti-racist and, and, and always taught me to stand up for it. 
she heard about it and then she took me to the race relations conciliator which they called it at the time mm. and i think it was chris carter and they couldn't believe <laughs> it's outrageous. it is outrageous it's outrageous but, but good on your mum and good on you for for because i suppose you can get, go two ways you can be like nah fuck that and you can be defiant or you can just sort of wilt away and i suppose a lot of people would sort of wilt away and just hide away because totally but it was see it was those kind of experiences and because my mum was a community leader like she was a uh, leader of the um pacific women's welfare league um and, and so she and always so so proud of being Samoan and never ever tried to compromise her culture or even assimilate to dressing more Balangi to be you know accepted which a lot of women did in that in that day and age and even some of my aunties but she really taught me to always be incredibly proud of who I am and who we were even though we're a minority no matter how people treated us and to always call it out and to always stand up for you know anything like that racism anything like that when it when it happened and as it happens and i i still do to this day but certainly mm. at a time when that wasn't done and certainly by young girls like myself oh yeah no i've always been hugely vocal about mm. that mm. you're vocal about everything though you freaking know and i um <laughs> I, I i i love that about you too like you you'll post some stuff on instagram and i'll be like yay go t and i wish i could have the same sort of um, you know, courage and or strength and convictions or whatever it is. Oh, you just you just don't don't mind putting your neck on the line, eh? Well, again, that that came from having a mum, you know, like I did, and that, again, that's why I'm so grateful for my mum. You know, everything that she was, because if she wasn't everything that she was, then I wouldn't be everything that I am today. Mm. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the, and like I said, the brutality, all of it. Mm. But I've survived, you know. And that's and that's what we do. We, mm. we survive. Have you do, have you had therapy or anything over the years hmm. to get to this point? Not not specifically, but um, I did do a couple of years of therapy at a really really bad time. But it wasn't actually to do with my mum, um, and because I don't know. I mean, I, people could disagree because I think it could be really useful, and it was really useful at a certain point in my life. Um, but I don't tend to sort of yeah. Um, rely on other people to get through things i i rely on myself i do a you lot figure of, it out yeah through look, reading or oprah <laughs> uh, well oprah was a great yeah reading reading I, I i find people who um inspire me um reading is a great one because mm. there's been so many great minds who have lived in much harder times than us yeah. who who understand you know sort of like life and things like that and, uh, and talking to people um, having a lot of older friends but i do internalize a lot of things because i really truly believe that's where I, all our answers lie Hundred mm. percent. Mm. Yeah. So, um, what? Why the move to Auckland when you're eight? Oh, because um, my mum's sister lived up here in Auckland, and some years before that, she had lost a child and um, to child cancer, and and my mum came up a lot during that time and used to bring us up. And I think they just got talking one day and just thought it'd be nice to live in the same city. Yeah. 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 That must have been um, like interesting. You're like, oh my God, there's there's more than three Samoans. <laughs> yes. Yes, Dominic. And so here's the thing. I was like going, oh, it's Christmas. Oh my gosh, these other brown kids. Oh my gosh, I just love you all, you know, because, you know, coming from. And they just thought I was a dork and like bullied me ruthlessly. <laughs> ruthlessly. And I was just like, I really did. I just thought I was just going to arrive. See all these other brown kids would all want to hug each other and be best friends. They fucking hated me. <laughs> Were you just like, too needy, too excited, too. No, because because I was not like your atypical brown kid. Like, they were all way more streetwise. Auckland kids are so much more cooler. Um, I was a nerd, straight up, straight up nerd. And I still am today. But they they just saw me as all those things, as mm. a nerd, weirdo, country bumpkin. You know, n they didn't think I was like... A, a proper brown person. <laughs> like, oh, good, you're not brown enough to put up with the brown <laughs> like, You don't belong anywhere. Oh, totally. And I was, honestly, it was heartbreaking because I just loved them all so much. Yeah. Oh, that's And uh, so you, um, how old's your son now? What's he, a 30s? 30, 32. It's fucking crazy, yeah, eh? It's, it's crazy. Insane. Grown ass man. So you were a, a young solo mum. Mm. Um, mm. So you got pregnant that's at 16? Sucked. That sucked. Did that? 16, yeah. Yeah. It was, awful it was awful what it, was it um yeah like just a relationship one night stand short relationship god no, no. dominic he was 
I it was like my first love. Yeah. 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 We went to the same church. Our families went to the same church and that's how we met. And um, you know, I was I was young but you know, you, I did. I really felt I was in love. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So was was there ever a this is this is going really deep, so you you, mm. you don't have to answer anything you don't want. Um, did, was there ever a question about keeping keeping him or not keeping? Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. Because yeah. you see, um, our parents, being Mormon um, and Samoan, wanted a, well because both of his parents are Samoan. Um, they wanted us to get married, and um, my son's dad at the time didn't want to get married. Obviously, it's a lot of responsibility to take on. Um, so young. And so because he didn't want to marry me, I didn't want to have him be forced into marrying me, which I knew our parents would have 100% just forced mm, him to marry. Mm. But th this is what we do, you know, um, in our culture. But I knew that that wasn't going to end well if this guy was forced to marry me because, you know... Out of necessity. Out of, because, yeah, yeah, I just yeah. didn't see how that was going to work. Um, and so I did, I thought, because, you know, I had big plans. My, my parents had big plans for me. I had big plans for me and, um, wanted to go to university and would have gone overseas to go to university. And so that was exciting, you know, and all of that. But I did try at the time to go and have an abortion. And, and I, I say it to this day, I, when you just know you cannot do something, and it was bigger than me, mm. and it was just, uh, you know, when you cannot, you, you just can't, I just know what no feels like, and it was a no. And even though I knew that my entire life was about to fall apart, um, particularly because of how my mum was at that time in her life, um, yes, and the fallout was huge, huge, and mm, I wouldn't wish that on... Anyone? <laughs> oh, thank goodness. Mm. Thank you. Oh, cool. Everything you have is so cool. <sighs> you, did you want to elaborate on that or, or not really? Like the fallout? Well, you know. Um, hmm. How I'll say it is I was very much punished. And mm. and and in, 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 in a myriad of ways for years, years. Mm. I can't believe you went crying, Dominic. I'm, um, I'm getting emotional myself because <laughs> you're. I'm just thinking like the. I mean the the twiller I know is a mm. you know like now a forty nine mm. year old woman like I'm mm. guessing e even at six, 16, you're still the same but you just you yes, just you're yes. a fucking kid yourself. Truly, truly. That is so much to go through. Truly, truly, and you know. Um, what I think, the, why I get like this um, and, and things I think about is the, the person I feel for the most, not only younger me, and I wish I had me, the adult, the, she had someone like me. To tell her everything to, was going to be yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah. But I, I feel mostly for my son. Mm. Mm. Because, you know, when you in punish... What, in what way? You've, you you, he's, he, you've given him a very good life. Yes, and but, a very good upbringing. you know, thank you. I've done my best. And I've made a lot of mistakes. And I've, and I've done a lot wrong, too. Yeah, you've you know. fucked him up. Yeah, but he's going to have kids you. and he's going to fuck them up. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it is, is whilst I was being punished, this young baby was by way of my situation. Mm. And he, didn't, he deserved better than that. Yeah. All children deserve better than that. Mm. How, how the fuck do you get through that, that period? That's where the counselling came in mm -hmm. because I had to, um, you know, coupled with that and oh, Dominic, we'll, we'll see how far we go with all of this because, <laughs> um, you know, got into a couple of really good and abusive relationships. Mm. Um, again, because, you know, because I didn't have my family, um, I, I so wanted a family unit um, and... and uh, yeah, I, yeah, no, things were, 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 were horrendous, horrendous. Yeah, yeah, which again, as I was saying earlier, th th this is, um, this, this paints part of the picture of your story, which mm. makes like <laughs> where you're, where you're at now and what you've done over the past couple of decades even more remarkable. Mm. So, um, so you're at home, you're, you're a teenager, do you go, 
do you go to school um, once your son's born or do you just drop out immediately? Had so you to. Drop out, was it sixth, sixth form then? Or? Yeah, so I completed sixth form not very well because I was about four months pregnant by the mm-hmm. time I finished sixth form and uh, school said that I could continue to attend as long as I wasn't showing. So weird. <laughs> so weird. But, you know, everybody knew I was pregnant, obviously. But also, you know, I was sixth form rep. Like, I would have been 100% head girl had I stayed for seventh form. Like, I, right, because you, know, oh, you were nerdy. Yeah, I was all yeah, the things, yeah, you know, I did yeah. the musicals, did the, you know, like, I was on the school council. Like, you know, I was that kid. I wasn't like this bad, you know, girl, you know, I don't know what bad kid means or whatever, but I certainly wasn't that type of, you know, student or person. Um, and I finished sixth form, but, you know, things were really bad by that stage, you know. And I had to go to work um, as soon as my son was six weeks old because I was too young for the DPB. So that's just what happened. So what were you doing? Was it retail? You were yeah, in retail. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So my first job was at Barker and Pollock, which was a material shop. And I was getting like something like $5 something an hour and then coming home and I couldn't even afford like plastic nappies so I had to use cloth nappies and you know cleaning all the nappies and like it was awful like it was like fucking <laughs> so you were environmentally <laughs> friendly before it was yeah, even I mean, it was such a thing. um <laughs> and you know I mean and then I actually after a while of working there McDonald's I found out McDonald's paid you 755 which was huge so I went to work at McDonald's and yeah I was actually before I came here um because I've still got my plaque from July 1992 where I got um, uh, crew member of the month. And I was like, and, you know, my son, April, May, June, July, was four months old, mm. you know. And so, you know. It must have felt nice at the time, like, um, yeah, some sort of validation. Or yeah, but it was hard work, yeah. you know. And I, I, I keep that plaque because, you know, um, as you say, like, you know, I, I don't think a lot of people sort of understand the actual story of my past. And I don't really divulge it mm. a lot, a lot. Um, but it's been a journey and I, I I know where I come from and I mm. know what I've been through, as does my son, more than anyone mm. else on this earth. When did your mum sort of start to accept him or start to accept you as... Well, you know... A mother. The thing was... Oh, cause my mum, bless her, she's so, she's so hard, but... but mm. But she, she did love me, and there was mm. a lot of love. But, for example, when I went into labour, <laughs> she came to the hospital, and I'm, like, in labour. And she just walks in and she goes, yeah, well, it's going to get a lot worse. <laughs> and then she was like, mum. But she was, you know, but I love yeah, you. But, yeah. but she, she, was, she was hard, man. She was hard, you know. And then, though... After my brutal childbirth, because that's a whole other story, <laughs> she did come to the hospital with Dad, um, and she was when she held my son. She was actually you could see that something in her was like that's my grandchild. And although she struggled, you know, she did struggle. She did love him, and I, I really believe that had my mum not left for Samoa to live when he was three months old, um, I feel that they. We actually, and her and my son, would have had an, an, quite an incredible relationship mm. had they had the chance. But we never really saw her again. Um, only about two more times we saw her again um, after that. Till I think my son was maybe 10. Wow. Mm. Wow. It's just hard to fathom how... How, like, just how tough that situation was for you, and did it did it feel tough when you were going through it, or is it on reflection you look back now and you go, how the fuck did I survive all that, um, or both? I think because you're in survival mode, mm. you know, yeah. when you're in survival mode, you are truly just surviving. And my son needed me, you know, and so there's not really anything else you can think about or or worry about, and and things were bad, and I. I I wished they were different at the time, but because they were what they were, you just have to deal with mm. what it is. And and your um his father or your your partner at the time or his parents, were they were they much help? No. Mm. Mm. So he's sort of grown up without a father figure. 
initially. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But another big thing for me was, again, Oprah and friends and friends examples of their parents and things like that. Because um, I do, I, I observe the entire world all the time. Mm. And I learn all the time from everybody. Everyone. So, come, uh, yeah, th- th- this is what we talked about before, coming mm. from being a fish and chip kid. Yeah. So mm. I never wanted anyone else to be a father figure in his life other than his actual father. That was really, really important mm. to me. Um, and so whatever I had to forgive, whatever I had to endure, I was prepared to do that so that that could be possible. Mm. Mm. Shit, you've always had the smarts, eh? It hasn't just come... <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like I'm, I'm getting better as a person all the time, but I feel like you've always been a good person. <laughs> oh, God, I know if I go that far, but I've always had this... Like I said, I, I kind of, I know, I mean, like we all are, we're, we're sort of just who we are at all stages mm. of our life, but I, I've never felt like I was a child, mm. even when I was a child. Um, and I don't know what that is or where that comes from. I mean, I also know in my household, you never get treated as you're a child, mm. ever. <laughs> <laughs> ever and I was like oh maybe that's why and also because I had such older siblings and because we always had a lot of family around us aunties uncles you know who were always older um I've always just thought a lot mm. beyond my age and mm. I think even now as a 49 year old I still think I'm, I think older than well. yeah well, well also no doubt about it, like having a having a baby when you're 17 it's going to force you to grow up oh, very shit, fast eh? shit, yeah. but god it must be so yeah um like so lonely like you're lo- losing all your school friends you're just uh, you're bewildered like a deer in the headlights and then um yeah, there's an incident when you're 18 um in kmart where you got abused oh my god yeah and see that's the thing like i i think again about racism and you know things that people don't actually remember just how blatantly racist people could be back then and I that to me was so heartbreaking because at that stage I was still working I always worked I always 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 worked um there was a lot of stigma around single mums and I never wanted anyone to be able to say "Mm," you know and again Mm. I just think back and go why don't you just stay the fuck home and look Mm. after your baby that was the most important um but I was always trying to better myself and make sure that people weren't given extra reasons to look down on me you know and so I even enrolled in university because I know that my mum was always really disappointed that I didn't go to university. I only stayed one year and I knew it wasn't for me. By that stage, I think it, I was just on another path. Mm, mm. Um, but at that stage, I was in university. I was also still working and I had this lovely Bernardo's lady that would look after my baby. And um, so I was, yeah, I was trying to buy a birthday present from Kmart, didn't have enough money, so went to... Uh, exchange it for a cheaper toy and this woman this grown woman with a toddler herself in the cart just felt the need to tell me you know how embarrassing it was to not be able to provide for my child um that broke my heart I'm a kid I'm a kid I'm Mm. a kid I'm a kid yeah I am a kid and shit was bad as enough as it was um and I said to her you know and I don't even know why but I think I was sort of taken aback and I said, oh, you know, for your information, I, I go to school and I work. And she just went, oh, yeah, right. My husband and I pay for people like you. Like, and, and, and I, you know, it was just so awful and so ridiculous, ridiculous, mm. so uncalled for. And when we were arguing, you know, this, then this white man comes up and says to her, are you all right? Oh, I <laughs> know, you, like, you said it was a long time ago, but it was, it was still the mid-1990s. It wasn't, yeah, you know, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was recent enough. How did you not turn, how did, how did you not turn feral? You know what I mean? And, and just think the worst of people. Think, fuck, if that's the way you're going to treat me, I'll fucking be that person. Because there are a lot of people that weren't like that. Mm. And the ones that are like that, they still piss me off to this day. I still get like mm. ridiculous people treating me in ridiculous ways for no reason. You know, it's like oh, that is just it's it's, it's ridiculous. Mm. But um, but I did. I I was shaking with my little toy, <laughs> shaking all the way back to my Bernardo's lady, and she'll tell you too because we we still know each other. Mm. Bless her, she's amazing. Um, I cried like somebody had died. Just the heartbreak. Yeah. 
she was like, what's happened? What's happened? What's happened? Because I just walked in and just like burst into tears. And, and look, she was a white lady with blonde hair. Do you know mm. what I mean? Like, so yes, this yeah. white lady with blonde hair had done that. But then my beautiful white lady with blonde hair <laughs> is looking after my baby, you know, as just, as, you know, understanding, yeah. you know. But it was, it was, it was things like that, you know. And again, because I was young, you know, mm. it, it, you know. And I, and I don't think it's, I think it's really unkind to, to, to um, put people down for um, seat. Mm. For not having enough. Mm. Yeah. Was that that period of your life the biggest adversity you've ever been through? Um, it was almost like it was kind of a long. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like it's a yeah when they get to two years old yeah, and that's it. Yeah, job, it was like it was a. Mm. Prolonged, mm -hmm. a prolonged period. As I said, you know, then I made choices that I, I feel like just always made shit worse, you know, like looking for love in all the wrong places and ending up with complete cunts, you mm. know, and just things like that. Yeah. Mm. So, 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 so that, um, so that, that version of Twila in mm. her like late teens with a baby at home or early 20s with a toddler at home, mm. um, what gives her the right to think that she can be like a successful actor or, you know, TV mm. personality? Because... Where does that sort of like confidence or burning desire come from? Because I had it before I had my baby. Mm. I was, for me, I, I always wanted to just do the most. Just always be something, yeah, do something for sure, for sure. Um, but it would would be easy. I mean, you, you, first of all, you're busy enough, and you've got enough going on. It'd mm. be easy to be sitting here now and go, you know what? I I could have been an actor. I wanted to be an actor, but mm. Uh, mm. he came along. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, perhaps because you know, and again, I'm thankful to my mum, to my both my parents, but my mum's family have um, incredibly incredibly high standards and expectations of all of their children. Mm. So we were always raised with huge expectations that everybody had to fulfill. And I, that was part of me. That was part of me, yeah. Mm. And Do you think part, part of it, um, I don't know, this is probably a bit <laughs> psychoanalyzing, but do you think part of it was thinking, right, if I can make it on the TV or in the movies, mum will be really proud? You know what? I'm sure that that has been a driving, a, a, a motivating force, yeah. uh, truly. And I guess where it came down to that specifically, because you see the thing is, Dom, I, because, you know, I always did well, you know, I, I, I've got no issues, you know, learning things, all of mm. that. I've been really blessed in that way my whole life, you know. Um, I found that really easy, which I've always believed was one of my advantages in life, that I never, ever had to struggle in that way. So I always knew that whatever I did, I'd be successful at, but I particularly wanted to be successful at what I loved. Mm. And my mum never, never, ever saw that as a viable career. So I guess for me, yes, I always, I mean, if I'd become a lawyer, if I'd become an accountant, it, whatever I would have gone down, you know, whatever road, I would have been good at it. I would have made myself be good at it. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to succeed in this, one, because it's what I love, but two, and it was not ever about proving mum wrong. It was just saying, see, mum, it was possible. That yeah. was all. That was all. And I really, really love that. I mean... I love that it made her so proud by the end, but I did struggle in the beginning. I did struggle in the beginning um, because I wondered, I didn't want that to be the only reason that any relationship in my life became good, mm. you know. Yeah, like that external validation sort of thing, yeah. Mm. But how did, how did you even do it? Because I'm trying to think back. Uh, who was someone on TV at the time? No one. Yeah. Not 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 in the. Was there, I mean, we had Tanga Pacifica, and I think we had had. Um, there was Ollie who was on. Um, was that program spot on? 
what was it? I don't know. There was like this magazine type program made in the eighties. Yeah, so there was one Samoan presenter on that in the eighties, mm. and then there was uh, Catherine McPherson, who I think was New Way. She was on what now? She was yeah. on what now? And then there was me. Yeah, <laughs> and so you're such a trailblazer, eh? Oh, you know what, darling. I recognised the need, and I mean, it sounds so cliche now because representation is so overused now and we've got it, but, but in, that, in that time, in that time when we didn't, um, I recognised the need for it, that this has to happen. Mm. This has to happen, and it has to happen in mainstream, and people have to start looking at us like we are the same as anyone else, and that was always a huge motivation for me, and again, I got to do it in, in, in the part of the world that, you know, that I love, like I love music, I love acting, I love writing, I love everything, the arts is my thing, that is my thing, mm. and I wanted to do it there. Yeah, how, how much of it has been um, just talent? And how much of it has been, you know, hard work and hustle? 50-50. Yeah. 50-50, yeah. I think hmm. you have to have, I think it helps if if you have a natural sort of talent in things. I think a lot of people get into this business now without any talent. <laughs> they just... <laughs> it's always going to be an uphill battle, isn't it? Yeah, they just want... But, you know, it also works out. So I'm yeah. like, wow, you don't even have to be talented anymore. You can just... It's like, you just, yeah. Just doing the thing. Awesome. <laughs> good for you. <laughs> yeah, good for you. Um, but um, it, I, I volunteered. I hustled. Mm. I hustled like a motherfucker. I gave up weekends to volunteer. I was an extra. I went and was an extra on Shortland Street. You know, in, in commercials. And anything that I could do, again, because I'm, I'm an observer. So I want to learn the job. I want to see what everyone does. I want to see the hierarchy of how it all works and talk to people, talk to people, you know, okay, so what do you do? How did you get to do that? La, 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 la. I'd always put my hand up, you know, and just do these things. And then, and I would, if there wasn't an opportunity, I would create the opportunity. And any opportunity that it was, I would go for it and go for it and go for it and go for it, even if it was no. I mean, that's still what we do today. I mean, I still get plenty of no's mm -hmm. in, in, in the opportunities that I go for. But thankfully, that's just how how this business is. And I've, I'm have i so used to it, you know. Yeah, after a while, no, no loses its sting, doesn't oh, it? Oh, no, you know. And especially, yeah, because the thing is, what it is is, the right person for the job. The right person for the right job. The mm. right job is not going to miss you. Hundred mm. percent. Yeah, things will things will come when the time's right. Yeah, I think they're saying something yeah. like that. So, what was the first job? Was it the Legend of Johnny Lingo? <laughs> What's the what is the the Legend of Johnny Lingo? <clears throat> so that was a Mormon film, and again. I wanted one of the main roles. I ended up becoming a featured extra, you know, and like, and some of the, you know, some of the girls that I told about the project got like the main roles, and mm. I'm like, that's okay, that's okay. I if they want me to do one line and one scene, I'm gonna come and do one line and one scene. Um, so that was my first, I think, uh, or one of the first, yeah, one of the first, probably the first film. Mm. I think because yeah. some of the stuff you've been involved with is just like iconic and groundbreaking, like you look mm. back, like the Sioni's wedding stuff, mm. the Bro Town stuff. Yeah, incredible. Yeah, very blessed. So so cool. Yeah, very. Yeah, very, you must be so proud much. of that. Yeah, oh, and mm. Shortland Street, you were Vassa from twenty ten to twenty fourteen. Vassa. Vassa. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Was that a good time? You enjoy shorties. Hey, it was a learning experience. Yeah. Um, it's, again, so grateful. It, it's the best training ground as an actor, and I needed it. You know, I mean, I, I, I've kind of just gotten into things before I knew how to do them. Mm. Um, you know, if, given a C4, being the radio, it, mm. all of this, you know, I, I never knew how to do any of it before I did it. Um, and I learned on the job, and Shortness Street um, taught me a lot, and it was such a great and challenging time of my life. Mm. Yeah. Challenging. Um, this business isn't isn't easy, and this business isn't necessarily nice. 
Wow. And what, what, I, th- I thought the challenging bit would have been learning the lines and the fast turn. No, around. that was easy no, for me. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, again, you know, I, I'm, I'm so blessed because of the amount of work, but it makes you sharp. You know, and I loved, I loved, you know, getting to to act every single day. And again, like learning the lines, you know, I just eat that stuff up Mm. easy. Yeah. Do you? Yeah. Amazing. mm, I know. And, um... Yeah, what about, what about you and Oscar quite, Lisa? When did, when did, because uh, I'm, um, I'm, in, I'm intrigued with this relationship because yes. I think there's parallels with um, you JJ, and JJ and myself yes. as well. Because you guys weren't the first um, couple to amicably uncouple. <laughs> uncouple. Consciously yeah, uncouple. Yeah, consciously uncouple. <laughs> you know, not even um, old mate Apple's parents. Uh, Chris, Martin yeah, Chris Martin and, and Gwyneth Paltrow. I was like, man, being there, done this, got the t shirt. Yeah. Because you guys, yeah, you guys are you guys are inc- incredible. It's such a such a wonderful friendship. So Thanks. you, likewise. So you were seeing each other, and you were engaged. Um, we were together. How the engaged thing came over, came about is because again, Oscar's mum is Samoan. My mum um, was like, you know, well, a girl just doesn't go around having boyfriends, mm. you know. Um, so basically our mums said to us, oh, so you're going to get married? And we both went, yeah. So it, there wasn't a proposal, a ring, anything like that, but we were going to get married. But it kind of just happened like our mums... Oh, like a convenience sort of thing. Well, not a convenience thing, but it's the right thing to do. Right. You know, it's the right thing to do. We're Samoans, you know. But you, but you, were, you were, so you were dating each other and you were, oh, you were yeah. in love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah. And, 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 but that was the thing, you know, like mum just didn't want to just, hey, you're not just going to be a single mother with boyfriends. Get married. <laughs> Get married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, my poor mama never made that dream come true. <laughs> so, so you were engaged for a bit and then um, yeah. he, there's an infidelity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Big time. Yeah, mm. yeah. Um, does he? Do, I've heard you sort of allude to this in some podcasts. Is he like Twila? Come on, stop, stop bringing this up. Or is he okay with well, it? Well, no, he's lucky that I have never really, really gone there. But I mean, I think he's, I, he's, a, he's a good. He's a good. We like, like I, I, I love him. I don't know him oh, all that well, too. but he's a good man. And, he is, and, and um, he is a vault. And you're you're both like so good for each other as people Thank now you. in the, Thank the you. state your relationships at now. Thank but you. But he, he fucked up badly. Oh, oh my god, that's that was the therapy. Mm. That was the therapy, and I think it was because of that because I think, um, yeah, I can actually say this, and I'm sure he won't mind. I think because what was so devastating about the Oscar and I situation was because I finally felt things were going to be okay. Mm. Well, you've forgiven him. Has he, has he forgiven himself? Is he, is he at peace with it now? I think you learn from these things, eh? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. 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 And th- this is about the same time that you guys were making um, Sione's Wedding. Exactly. See, <laughs> which, is, which is like a, a groundbreaking movie. Like, it could have all ca- capitulated. Truly. <laughs> truly. You know, I was like this. Oh, great. Now we've got to go do this movie together. <laughs> and I hate your freaking guts. And I, you know, and, and like, and I'm like this. So I, I, I haven't seen the movie since um, in years. But are, are you a couple in the movie? Or? No, God, oh, yeah, thank, thank God, fuck. thank God. That's an act, uh, like I a, a level done of that. acting you couldn't. That I could not have done that. I was like, thank God, it's Chappelle, my best friend, Chappelle. <laughs> so, like, um, so, so you know, I did. I said to him though. I said, you know, for the sake of this film, because we knew how important it was going to be, we knew how it, why it had to be made. We knew how hard we had worked to even make it and I said to him okay six weeks call a truce we're cool we're cool I will I will come to work we will do the thing we'll make the movie and then you know the experience of making the movie was incredible for me it was my first feature I I, you know it was with all our wonderful friends all these incredible talented Mm. people who I'm I I freaking admire and am fans of and then on our final rap day, they were saying the, the prayer and he put his arm around me. And I think in that moment, we knew there was going to be a different relationship going forward. You guys just have each other's backs now, 100%. like un- unconditionally. Like 100%. there's Yeah, there's um, yeah, one particular moment there. Did you want to talk about the, the Snapchat thing? Or? Oh. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think people. Just... I mean, I mean, if there's anything, I don't know if there's anything new to add to the convo. Nah. How do you feel? You, you no, tell me. Not, not particularly. But the yeah, the so the um, Snapchat thing, um, which I I kind of like this just because of um, I mean, in, in the sort of environment that you've been in. So this this came uh, in 2014. So this is after you've been on Shortland Street for four years. Shortland mm. Street's got a big publicity machine mm. behind them. Any publicist or PR person will tell you, don't give it oxygen. Um, and you did the exact opposite because you did what was right for you or what you thought was the right thing to do, which I think was commendable. But um, uh, we're, we're Oscar ties into this. Like at the time, you, you were like, oh, I'll, you know, I, I think I asked you to come on our radio oh, show and yes, talk about it. that's right. That's and, right. And you came in and Oscar was there with you, not yeah. to go on the air with you, but just, no. to, just to drive you in and be your like support person. Totally. Cause I was so getting, fucking cool. Truly. Because I was getting, I mean, fuck. People were, I was getting it, I, and I got it for years and years and years. In what, in what way? Just online, online, if you still go, there was a couple more incidents later, and people just continued to pile on, continued the pile on, and, you know, and, and yeah, just, I, I got really tired of it in the end, um, which is, I guess, a little bit why I, I don't do a lot of these, mm. you know, because and all it is, and it's not because... Um, you know, I can't handle it or anything like that. It's just, who needs it? Who needs it? <laughs> yeah, I don't fucking yeah. need this in my life. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. But it's, um, you, you look back on that now, and it's like, uh, first of all, it's lucky um, Conrad didn't get done. Uh, uh, for now you'd get done for, like, revenge porn or whatever the label is for it. Again. Uh, well, even though he was just young and stupid oh, and totally. there was nothing vengeful in it. but um, Totally. But that, that's that's one thing that I will offered to this now, um, th this many years after, because I think it was, what are we, two, 214, 20, oh, 10 years, we're 10 years. Oh yeah, no, cause there was, the, the, yeah, in May this year, you sh shared a meme about it. Yeah. There was a meme, like um, something about um, the Warriors hiring yeah. a new head coach. That was one of the memes that came <laughs> out. Because I tell you, some of them were actually funny. And and that was one of the, hey, you know what, who have made that? That was funny. But um, I can say this now, and I remember you asking me at, at the interview, and Oscar went, nah, and I went, yeah. But 10 years on, can totally talk about it. So people still today go, I don't even know why you came out and said it was you. And, um, well, one, Rachel Glucina rang me directly and said, hey, this video is going out, and I think it's you. We're going to run it whether it's you say it, it's you or not. But it was actually after Comrade called me and went, oh, I have to go in for a um, thing, a investigation with the NRL. So then I was like, okay, he's, you know, young, starting his career. They're going to take him for something like that. It's going to, uh, so I may as well just come in, oh, you know what, and just make it easier. Mm -hmm. But I made it easier for him. <laughs> 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 totally, <laughs> like did not realise what it was going to mean for me mm. yeah, at that time. But that was 100% what I, what I, in my summation of the situation, and we had like two minutes to think of this. Sorry, yeah, we're looking at the time. But no, yeah. no, not, not yeah. at all. I'm just yeah. mindful of your time. Yeah, but. yeah. But see, and, and I just thought, I got two minutes to think about, what do I do? Oh, fuck it. You know what? And also, as I said to you back then, and it still is today, to me, it is still not a big deal. It never was a big deal. It's still not a big deal. And anyone that thinks it's a big deal is, I don't know, it's just weird. Mm. Yeah, and the fact that people would still still bring it up. But do you, the, the way things played out, do you like think in hindsight, I wish I didn't come forward and say it was me? No, or, no you wouldn't do anything differently? No, no, yeah. no way. Because what I didn't realise at the time um, was me just being myself um, actually helped a lot of other women. Because I still, but particularly back then and for years afterwards, Women would literally stop me in the street and thank me and say thank mm. you. That really did something for me. And again, that's why my whole thing has been, you know, I really, really, really hate people who shame female for anything that they have to do with their sexuality because we live in a time where anybody, everybody's sexuality mm. is, is respected except for women, mm. except for females, you know. And I, that, if there's a hill that I die on, dom. That is it. Yeah, good for you. Because you, you weren't doing anything wrong. And, and it was 10 years ago, and it, like, it would have been a big learning experience for him and, and all, everyone in that totally. environment, I think. Totally, yeah. totally. Yeah. How, was, how was your mental health through that period? Oh, I, I suffered because of the shock. Mm. Because I was like, 
what is happening? Because, yeah, the fallout, when I just thought, oh, yeah, no, it's not going to be that big a deal, the fallout shocked me. And I think any kind of shock is traumatic. Mm. Um, when people are unkind on mm. mass, it's, it's traumatic. Um, anyone who's been the you know the center of anything like that, um, they will know it hurts. You know, um, and and people don't have a right to make people feel that way. And also, people out there who do that, you know, you know that will hurt that person. Mm. So, you you know, it's a conscious choice. People aren't just thinking, oh, I'm just doing this, and I'm sure she feels great about it. <laughs> yeah, and we and when you're the person involved, there's nothing worse than like scrolling and it's just seeing like oh hundreds of comments. Thousands, and you don't even thousands. have to stop. You stop on any one like a roulette thing, and it's like, oh yeah, that's a negative thousands. one. Thousands. Yeah, thousands. It feels like the whole world is against yeah, you. Yeah, people you don't even know. Totally, totally. And people still say fucking the most horrendous things today. Online, still, yeah, still, yeah. Unpl about that, yeah, totally, <laughs> Ten totally. Years ago, totally, totally, totally. <laughs> um. In another layer, layer of, well, fuck, sorry, we can move on from this if you want. But another, like, so your son, he was like 20 at the time, 21, 22. Mm, um, gosh, two, gosh, 32, do the math. Mm. 22. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, how was that? Was he supportive at the time? Yeah, uh, but again. Must have been hard on him. Oh, it was awful. Mm. Awful, awful, awful. And again, years, years later, and people would keep bringing my poor son into things. And again, there's, I guess it's a little bit why I sort of, try to stay out of it, out of, you know, things unnecessarily because I don't want the attention put on him unnecessarily and it, I think it's really unfair and mm -hmm. and there's nothing that that hurts me more or makes me... Um, the fiercest I ever am is if you come for me, first of all, mm. but if it involves my son, mm -hmm. then, mm, yeah. Shit. Yeah, yeah I wouldn't fuck with you. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Shit, you're, yeah, you're a good mum, eh? He's done what, uh, well, is, he, is he appreciative? Or, you know, I, I know, we, as, um, I don't know, I can't speak on behalf of all young men, but, you know, you grow up with a chip on your shoulder and you're a little bit selfish and self-absorbed <laughs> and it gets less and less as you get older. Yeah. But is he, um, is he appreciative? Does he let you know he's appreciative of everything you've done? Absolutely. Yeah. I think, I think, as, but again, you know, our kids only know us as a parent. It's not mm. like they they have anything else to compare it to. And he has always understood how hard it's been and also how much I've tried as well. Mm. And then of course, you know, as as him the parent I mean, so the, the, the son looking at me, oh there's definitely things that I'm I know um he's struggled with and struggles with to understand, but again, He's 32. Maybe as he gets older, he'll be like, yeah, I get it now, Mama. Mm. Yeah, but we love each other very, very much, and we're very, very close. And I still do the utmost that I can um, to support his life journey. Yeah. 100%. Mm. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. I love that so much. He doesn't have any kids. You're not a grandmother yet? No, and I would love to be. <laughs> I would love to be. Love, love, yeah. love to be. Um because again, as parents, it's not till you've grown to a point yourself and realised once you've matured what you could have done better, and you get to do that with your grandkids, mm. which is why everyone will tell you, "Oh my God, you want to see my mum or my dad with you know the grandkids compared to how they were with them?" But that's because we we know now, mm. we know now, we know better now. We didn't know we were learning on the job, and now we can apply those lessons. And and um, I'd love to be a grandmother at the same time. If he doesn't choose to have kids, I'm also okay with that too. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, good. Yeah, are you are you seeing anyone? Are you in, uh, no, no, no. Are you, I, I think I get the feeling. Um, yeah, are you just gonna sort of um, clooney your way through life? You reckon? Just yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. I, I feel like after you've been sort of on your own for a certain period of time, mm. you, you become quite protective of that lifestyle. Like it's well, you not like you're so on the hunt for someone. You become so accustomed to yeah. it. Yeah, you know. I think. I think. Probably once you hit the twenty year mark, you know, um, yeah. To to think now, to I mean, it's not that I don't believe in being with someone, or I don't love being in love, or I don't have you know a lot to offer in relationships. If I would have that type of relationship, but you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. You, know. you like having your things a certain way. Yeah, and you know, I just don't know. <laughs> and there's a lot of compromise involved, and I'm like. Mm, 
Am I prepared to do yeah, this? Yeah, why should I? <laughs> <laughs> At least you're Jason Momoa. You know, yeah, I mean, hey, there'll be exceptions. <laughs> you know, I'll be like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, oh, now, what about Scribe? Like, I've seen you at a few things. And, yeah, um, maybe and you see. Scribe. I love Scribe. Yeah. Is, so uh, is, are you related to Scribe? No. No, so what it is is Oscar and Marlo are uh, cousins. Oh, Oscar, Marlo, Lady, they're all the same family. Right. Um, and via my friendship with Oscar and the three of us have become, uh, we call ourselves the Trin. <laughs> the Trin. What is that? The like? Unholy Trinity. No, <laughs> <laughs> no we, because we, um, we have a very, um, a very, very special uh, friendship where we have really seen each other through um, a lot in our lifetimes. Mm. Um, a lot of, there, there's a lot of reasons why the three of us are friends. Obviously, they're related, and but what it specifically was, I think I know from myself and Marlo, and even with Oscar, you know, coming from the backgrounds that we come from and the lives that we come from, and then suddenly we have these big public lives. Um, and a lot of people that were in our lives couldn't understand what we go through mm. but the three of us could totally understand at all times what we were going through mm. and that cemented a friendship in my life that in our each other's lives that i mean it's wow that it, it's truly something mm. Mm. yeah he's a good dude eh? he truly i is. love scribe so True, much i love him and love you guys him. you yes you guys you oscar scribe all samoans you, your career's on the rise at the same time. Like mm. The Crusader album came out probably about the same time as C4. He was my first interview so on Freestyle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's remarkable. Yeah. Well, who else? What about Taika? You know Taika? Are you mates with Taika? Yes. I mean, yeah, I've known Taika a long time. Right. Yes, yeah. And Rita? You hang with him and Rita or no? No. no I mean, <laughs> I've met Rita. She's, yeah. she's yeah. incredible. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's good to see these Kiwis doing so well. Oh, what about yeah. you and Sam Neill? There's photos of you online. What's yeah, your, oh, uh, he's, again, he's he's a, he's a good friend. But see, now I'm just feeling like, I'm just name dropping all my, you know, friends. <laughs> um, no, he's an incredible man. He's an incredible man. Again, um, uh, how that friendship started was when we did Sione's, he sent a beautiful box, two beautiful boxes of his wine to Oscar and us for, as a congratulations. And that's kind of how it popped off. Wow, yeah. that wine's expensive too. It two paddocks. Is, it's it so is. good. Oh my God. And I've got to tell you what we did because it was me, Chappelle and Oscar at, at Oscar's house when it arrived. And I think, because, you know, Shim was just like, oh, cool. And we drank like <laughs> we just like opened it and probably drank like yeah a good amount of the entire. Case. Oh no! Yeah, it's like fifty bucks a bottle. I know, shit. I oh, know. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a Tuesday night. Let's just have, oh no. Yeah, but you know, I mean, for us, you know, things like that were real novelties. Um, you know, and and I again, you know, knowing people like this who I admire and who are incredible, like. What a blessing, what mm. a blessing, you know. Um, when we were just over in L.A. recently for Oscar and Tyker's latest film release. Oh, last goal, first goal, last yeah, goal next wins. goal wins. Next, next goal, goal wins. wins. Yeah. And so afterwards, um, we're hanging at that place, you know, the Chateau, Chateau Mama, where everyone hangs out. Um, and we were going after the screening to catch up with, Michael Fassbender. See, I hate. I'm not saying these names to be like, but. Oh no, but I'm uh, I'm, I'm I'm like provoking you yeah, to drop I'm not, names but here. I'm just, I'm just saying like cool <laughs> you fell, moments. Like you, cool fell in, moments. you fell into my trap. Like he's, but he's such a cool guy, right? He's like one of the best people I've ever met. Fassbender. Yeah, hundred percent. He is one of. He's just so great, and so is him. Everybody. There's just so many great people mm. in this world, mm. and and when I get to meet or even you know be around anyone, I'm I'm only ever. Um, inspired and and learned so much, but we were all hanging out drinking. It was so fun. There was all these you know gorgeous women around as there is in LA, and then Axel Rose <laughs> comes up. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, "There's oh, hey man." He, of course, he's only coming to see Michael, and he's like, "This just wanted to say what a great fan he is." And then Michael's like, "Join us!" And then he like knees me, and I'm like, "Yeah, come join us!" <laughs> you know, to like get Axel to come join us. 
But they were actually closing the bar at that time and we were running out of drinking time and we were like going to the waiter, please, please, no, get us one more round of drinks, come on, please. And then Ex was like, oh, wait here. And then he goes away and then he comes back and he goes, okay, guys, I got us some more drinks. <laughs> and we were like this, yeah, come join us, come join us, come join us. And then, so then he does. And then I'm sitting there and there's like Michael Fassbender here, Alex Rose over here, there's like gorgeous LA woman over here and there's my best friend Oscar and I'm just going, see, these are the moments I love for. These, these are cool. This is a cool night. What is life? That yeah. is amazing. Yeah, and then I'm like, cool. yes, well. And you're a Guns N' Roses fan. You freaking know. Did you have to hold your shit tight that night? I Not sure like- did, but then I broke the golden rule. <laughs> I Because, you know, I was like this. I know, because that is the rule. You know, Dom, you do not ask for photos. You just don't. And even though you don't, oh my God. But I was, you know, we'd had, by that stage, we'd had lots of drink. And I broke the golden rule and I asked Axel for a photo. And <laughs> And he, but you, you got one. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't post it, though, because I didn't want it. But now I'm telling you, I'll show you. Oh, it'll be you better. you got to post that now. Oh, yeah, I'll post it. You? I'll post it. Because, well, again, you know, like, otherwise... That's such a cool... Set. Well, well but, I mean, did anything bad come of it? Oh, no. It, it, no, but it you just... It just makes the relationship... You're, suddenly it's a fan yeah, relationship. You're on a lesser level. Yeah, and you know, <laughs> it's just like this... What about King Charles? There's a photo on your Instagram of you and King Charles. Oh, at, yeah, that was when so was that? hilarious. You, are you quite young at the time? Oh. What was it at? I was mentoring at this program. Right. And we were one of the programs that he was visiting. Um, but people will tell you this really happened, and, I, and I'm not even, I'm not exaggerating or gassing myself up or anything like this. But we were all standing in line to meet him, and... They have, you know, everything's planned out. The way he's going to walk in, you know. Who oh, the he's protocol gonna, is yeah, intense. Who he's going to meet. Yeah. Like that. And <laughs> he was coming. He was getting, you know, ushered in to go the way that he was meant to go. Then he took one look at me and I just turned and went, oh no, I'm going to go. And he made a beeline for me. But then he tripped over a piece of carpet because this wasn't the way he was supposed to be walking. And then it was like, and it was like this, oh no. And then, and then we, you know, all like these things happen. You, you just get to sort of sit around and talk. But then, yeah, every time we talk, he'd always like talk to me. And I'd be like, hey, well, you know. <laughs> you know? Well, I think it's just because you've got this, um, I don't know, like a, an aura or charisma or oh, something I don't know I thank you I mean I was in a pretty fabulous dress but, yeah um, <laughs> oh it's funny oh what about Snoop Dogg you, oh, you don't hang yeah. with Snoop Dogg Tom now you just go <laughs> yes no these are these are great yarns oh gosh but you know this is I do want to disclaimer I when I am with the people that are the people except when I asked Axel for a photo um I <laughs> I do regard them as the human beings they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah I am. Yeah. I, you know, it is pretty cool when you're like, you understand who they are. But as you'll know, meeting so many people as well via our work as well, we meet mm. all these kind of people. Um, it, it's, but the energy of the people themselves is still incredibly special mm. because of who they are, but not because of who they are, because of who they are. Mm. And that's that to me is what I love as well. So, all right. We'll say it like this. <laughs> Snoop, this is a long, long, long time ago too. A very, very long time ago. So Snoop is an avid gardener. <laughs> and... Um, <laughs> oh, come on. It's, it would be... It, anyone that even, never smokes weed in their life, if you had the option to smoke weed with Snoop Dogg, you would. Yeah, so... 100%. So, yeah, so, so what it was is... Yeah, I just helped him out. Amazing. Mm-mm. What do you mean you helped him out? With his gardening. <laughs> <laughs> the earth. Okay, okay. We'll leave yeah. it there. Um, what about Bobby Kennedy Jr.? Oh, man. Well, have you, like, gone through my whole life? <laughs> no, on a, to go through your whole life, this would be like a 10-hour podcast. Hour, yeah. It is such a rich and fabulous life. The, oh, no, thank this you. is just scratching the surface of... Um, yeah, because... But I, the, the, the thing I like about... Like, the first half of this podcast, it was talking about some of the stuff you've been through, mm-hmm. like your childhood, your upbringing. Mm. And um, then the good times. Yeah, we, yeah like, to, to, from where you are, 
um, right now from where you've been. It's oh, I totally. think it's something that should be celebrated. It's really Thank cool. Thank you, Han. Thank you. Because so that was incredible again. Because I also am a huge admirer of the Kennedy family. I have studied them my whole life. I've always been, you know, loved the work that they have done um, and what they represent politically. And so I was invited to this dinner um, where Bobby Kennedy Jr. was the keynote speaker. And then afterwards, um, his people asked me if I'd like to go fishing the next day. They were going out on a fishing charter and I had never been um, fishing before. So I was like, what a great opportunity and to go with Bobby Kennedy Jr. So we just went and it was so funny because we're like on this boat. I mean, obviously, you know, it's a really nice yacht. Um, there's Bobby, there's me and um, a couple of other New Zealand politicians and basically Secret Service type security and me, <laughs> you know, and I'm just going. Unreal. Yeah, and we're just hanging out, talking and and it was a lovely day. Who were the New Zealand politicians? Um, so Mike Moore, the late Mike so, Moore. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, he was the head of the Labour Party for I think he was Prime Minister for a while as was, well, wasn't he? he was, Pre-Helen was, Clark, way back. Yeah, yeah. So he was there. Um, Shane Tapo was there. And then a lot of the names escaped me. The rest of the guys escaped me. Um, and then just security. But I remember as soon as I came on the boat, all the New Zealand boys had decided that I wasn't going to sleep with them. Because they were like, man, imagine telling your grandkids, you turned down a Kennedy. And I remember thinking in my, in my head, <laughs> who says I'm turning him down? <laughs> but I got the memo. I got the memo. Yeah, right. I was like, we could just go fishing, all right. <laughs> right, right. And what about, oh, speaking of politicians, um, yes. is Winston Peters actually your uncle? Everybody asks me this, no. He is not my biological uncle. However, um, I have adopted him. The same way that I have adopted John Barnett as my godfather, as they're just great men who I just love and mm. admire, and and I do I I love Winston. I I think he is he is exactly who we need in our parliament and have whenever he's not been there, it's been a really bad time. Um, and I call him uncle out of a term of endearment and respect, and I do respect him, and I believe that other people should too. Mm. Mm. Do you get backlash for that from people like, oh, he, he's racist, how can you? I think people certainly, especially in our industry, um, have opinions. But again, I, I just think that's mm. ridiculous. I just think it's so ridiculous. It's like, wh why do people nowadays especially look for reasons to dislike somebody else or to separate them, you know, and be on a different side? It's like, oh, shut up. I, I don't care about any of that. I, I really don't. I, none of it is important to me. <laughs> I know. Like, really, none of it bothers you, eh? No. I was listening to a podcast a couple of weeks ago with um, Charlemagne the God. Do you know oh, Charlemagne? yeah, yeah. And um, the, he was asked, oh, what do you think of people that vote Republican? And he was like, he was like, well, there's like 16 million people that vote Republican. Like, I, I, I can't put them all in the same, in totally. the same group. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> same, same goes here. It's yeah. just ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. I um yeah I think as I've got older I don't know if this is the thing you do but I've started to look for almost like age role models so like if I see Mick Jagger on TV and it's his 80th birthday I'm like okay fuck you you can still live a good life as you get older and older and oh, yeah. I'd put Winston in that category like he's he's in his late seventies always looks immaculate his hair is always yes. perfect yes he's and he's handsome he's sharp oh, absolutely like mentally like the stuff that comes out of his mouth it's like I wouldn't fuck with him absolutely he's mm. fantastic you know and also what we have to remember is this generation they're not going to be here forever and when they're gone we're never going to see this generation mm. again the the kind of lives that built these kind of people mm. you know and and everyone should respect that yeah yeah 100 percent. Mm. and how, how about you where do you see yourself in like 5 10 15 years from now who knows darling who knows you know what i've i've come to realize or really apply to my life is i don't attach myself to outcomes truly because i also know that life can go ways that you never plan no, no matter how well you plan things um i see myself right now um you know when people have like have their midlife crises mm. you know it usually happens around now i am 100 percent in my midlife chrysalis <laughs> i truly am because you know dom because of my life because of my big life that i've had and i'm only 49 
Um, I haven't really had a chance to ever really think about that. Mm. You know, I left school, became a mother. Then, you know, the career happened, and then I'm just doing, and I'm a single mother, you know, so I'm doing everything. And now I would say is the first time ever that I'm able to sit back even for a second and go, hey, what would I like to do now? Where would I like that to go? There, There's so much that I want to do, mm. but it's so... Oh my gosh, it could just be so many things. Um, but there's even things that, you know, I, I'm i a closet musician and, you know, I want to spend more time. There's certain pieces of music I want to learn to play before I die. Um, you know, things like that. I, I want to continue to create meaningful work. Mm. I want to continue to always be contributing positively to the world, but most of all, to the people I love. Mm. And I think that truly is the most powerful thing we can do, period. Mm. Mm. Y- you're proud of yourself? Hmm, that's a really interesting question. Um, it's a hard one, eh? I feel is. like it's maybe even, uh, it, I, I like asking this to all the guests because I think it's an unusual question for New Zealanders to answer. Mm. Um, but especially if you're like friends of mine that are Samoan, talofa. Um, <laughs> they, uh, they, they, they took, uh, if they say, if you say you're proud of yourself, you can often get accused of not being humble enough. <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting that you bring that up because being Samoan, um, so another aspect about growing up with my mum is she never complimented me once. Mm. Uh, in her mind, it makes you vain. Um, and so it's something I've never, you know, people ask me that all the, all the time and I, I don't know, I don't know if I can say, yeah, I'm so proud of this. Um, do I love where I'm at? Yes. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I, I can't. Yeah. 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 Gonna put, that's the first thing you've passed on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, what about, what about your mum? Was she proud of you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. How do you know this? And that's the thing. Um, because of our wonderful relationship later in life, mm. and, and this is why I think forgiveness is really important. If you don't forgive people, especially the people in your life who are important, like your parents, that's a really important relationship to forgive. You don't give, give them the opportunity to even know them in another, in another way. Mm. You know, if you hold on to these things, you did this, I'm never going to forgive you and I'm never going to, you know, you, you'll never see another side of them. You, mm. you won't give yourself the opportunity to mm. see it. And they, you won't give them another opportunity to show you who they are in other ways. And I, oh my God, you're going to make me cry, but mm. I'll tell you how I know my mum was proud of me because of the way she would look at me. Mm. Wow. Oh my God. Shit, I'm bumping up. Mm. Sounds like non-verbal. Mm. And I would know. Fuck. Yeah. yeah. Can you remember your last conversation with her? Yeah. Was it in person or? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I, I took her to the hospital and um, she died nine days later. Um, Yeah, we we were at a really good place. Mm. <sighs> and um, in the end, Dom, because Mum couldn't speak towards the end, mm. end, it was me telling her how much I loved her. Mm. And it was me telling her how proud I am of her. Mm. Um, and thanking her for everything. And just loving her. Mm. And I think, Sorry. I think we all deserve to go like that. Mm. Well, yeah, especially as you, as you get older, eh? It's like we were talking about before. Everyone's human. Everyone's going to fuck up. Truly. Unless you're never going to fuck up truly, yourself. Truly. <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's this thing, mm. you know, you're the one who grows. Mm. If you allow yourself the capacity to forgive people for things you don't think what other people think you could forgive people for. You're the one who mm. grows. You're the one who, mm. who, who, who ultimately benefits from that, mm. you know. Mm. I reckon that's probably a good place to end yeah. it. Shit, that's beautiful. 
That's really beautiful. Thank yeah. you. Well, I'm proud of you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I know. I think you're. Thank I think you're awesome. I, um, I think you're awesome. D- yeah. Whenever. Yeah. When, whenever I see you, and it's not that frequently, but I. I just feel good immediately. It's just. Thank um. You. Yeah. You're a good person to be around. You've got great energy. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dom. Likewise. I'm so pleased we finally made this happen. Oh the, my the, god. The DMs. We've been going backwards I know. and forwards. You've been yeah. sliding into my DMs. <laughs> <laughs> you had COVID a couple of weeks I ago. Know. Yeah. It's yeah. been good. It's been it's it's been good. And and thank you, thank you for this opportunity and and for the wonderful conversation. Yeah, yeah. No, I appreciate you for being so open and vulnerable. And um, yeah, it's nice when you get the tissues out. Oh my gosh, yes, that's cool. Yes. So this has been one hour thirty seven. <laughs> this is how much we've recorded. Wow. When it comes out, if it's shorter than that, you'll know that there's been some tea that's been chopped out. <laughs> <laughs> how long are they normally? Oh, so yeah, and uh, between an hour and a couple of hours. Oh, nice. I, yeah, I, yeah, so I we're, just, we're I don't in know. The, we're in there. Yeah, it's a, and it's it's in a good zone. I could talk to you forever though. Like, Me there's too. there's Me so too. much to your story, like the Oscar stuff. Like, we could we could you know pick around that for an hour because it's like such an aspirational and inspirational relationship. Yeah. Um. But yeah, all, all the relationships you have with people are good. And that's that's partly because of you, obviously. Well, because I, I, I really do maintain that, Dom. You know, I mean, our relationships are a reflection of ourselves. Mm. And how you choose to relate to other people is going to be your reality. Mm. And I really do believe in loving people. I really do. And I really believe in understanding people. And and that comes from I've, I've had to learn to, to love and understand myself. And especially because there was a lot of the time in my life, there wasn't anyone else. Mm. You know, so I, I do... I. I do try to be the person, you know, that whole saying, be the person you needed. I, I do try and be the person I needed. And I I do try to be a way to everyone I know so that no one would ever go through what I went through. Mm. You know, I would not want anyone to experience some of the things that I have been through. So I never want to be a perpetrator of any kind of that behaviour that would cause that for anyone else. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you're wise. <laughs> if it was, I mean, I put you on the spot right here. This is a really, really tough question. Um, yeah, if, if it was your funeral and people were speaking about you, what three words would they like to sum you up? I would know what they were. Mm. Um, they would say um, loyal, unconditionally loving. Mm. And the best time you ever had. <laughs> <laughs> way that's more. A, than, that's way, a lot more. Way but, more than three. But, the, but the, the, that's what because I know that um, we're here for a good time, not a long time. And so people do have a good time with me. Mm. And I like. I know when I leave, a lot of people will know that. Yeah, yeah. Remember the good times. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I, if it was your funeral and those um, those three words or phrases were um, bandied about, I'd be nodding in agreement. Hundred percent true. You. You're a great human, and thank you oh, so much for gosh. coming on the podcast today. Thank you, darling. Thank you for having me.